Hello, you're watching Everard Junction and today we're going to be working on the scenery on the next section of the layout. So before we begin I'd just like to quickly thank you all for your positive reactions to the previous video. That was the video concerning the, uh, the new Backman Freightliner flats. I put a lot of effort into making that video and uh, I really thank you for your positive reactions to it. Um, especially the uh, the historical um, bit of history on the real things. A lot of people seem to really enjoy that. So in future, I will try and do a few more of those sorts of videos where I look at models um, and include the history on the real things as it seems to be of interest to you. Anyway, uh, on to today, uh, we're going to uh, start building up the scenery on the uh, beginnings of the town. Uh, this is the outskirts of town where the canal is and the town will progressively get larger as we go around the corner and head towards the station. So you would have last seen this area where I installed the Magna Rail system that allows me to run vehicles on the road surface and uh, I'm pleased to say it is still working. Uh, it is not the easiest system inst to install, there's a lot of troubleshooting and fine tuning to get it to work correctly. Uh, you also have to bear in mind I'm running it over a ridiculous distance as far as Magna Rail are concerned. It really is intended for you know, a short run on a diorama or an end scale layout. Um, running it the best part of 20 feet I think is rather stretching um, its capabilities, but it does still seem to be working quite nicely and although I have one or two problems with some vehicles, most of the vehicles that I have work quite reliably and it's really nice to get them running and then run the trains in the background. It just adds that extra dimension of realism. Since that video I have made a change on this corner, um, I foolishly uh, had a joint um, in the paper road surface, you can just about see it on the corner by uh, Smith's. Um, whilst the vehicle was making its turn, um, there was this uh, joint where the um, top bit of paper, the road surface, went from one to another and it did upset the vehicles as they were in the middle of a turn. So what I've done is I've cut out a section of that road um, and then laid in a fresh piece to get rid of the join. It then puts two joins in the road surface but they're on the straight and the vehicles don't seem to mind having a joint on a straight. Um, when you're on a curve it seems to be a few problems, or at least for me anyway. Um, so that's really the only thing I've had to do to it. Other than that, it all it seems to be behaving itself. So now I'm happy with the functionality of the, uh, the road in this particular area, we can now finally move on to doing some of the scenery on the edge of the town. I have done some work in this area off camera just to get us started. Um, you can see that uh, the road has got a bit of paint on it in a few places. I've added some dirt texture and some sculpt mould around the buildings. Um, the buildings uh, have their doors painted, that was something I did a few years ago, but uh, just in case you haven't noticed, the buildings have their doors painted. It just makes every building look a little bit different, adds a bit of detail. The buildings need a lot of extra details and bits adding to them. I will be adding that in a future video. Over the back you can see we have this retaining wall. I uh, constructed this over the Christmas uh, break for 2018 and uh, it is in constructed entirely from scratch using Plasticard. Um, took quite a while to make, I just did it in my own time off camera. It was a nice little job, I enjoyed doing it. Um, there's still a lot to do, obviously it has to extend around the corner to the station so we will cover the construction of retaining walls in future. But just to get us started in this video, that's already been done. It's got a basic bit of weathering and painting on it, and I'm quite happy with that. I'll probably add some extra effects and bits and pieces, um, but we'll see how we go with the vegetation in this area. It may not need too much more weathering. Just to break things up and to give a view of the trains in the background, if you are looking at the layout from eye level, um, I've put this little uh, alleyway in. I might, uh, I might be adding some uh, sort of lock-up type garages, perhaps in the background against the retaining wall there. That might look quite good. Um, I've got a little couple of ideas for this area, but nothing set in stone yet. So we'll see how we go. 
So first job is going to be just putting uh, some filler over the top of the sculpture mold in this area between these two houses. Um, I don't want it to be super smooth like a freshly tarmacked type thing but uh, I would like it a bit smoother than that um, so that uh, some vehicles can you know, actually use it and park up and we can add some pothole details some cracks uh, later on. Next I'm going to improve the, uh, the pavements in this area. Uh, at the moment it's just uh, one millimeter plastic card glued down and I've painted it. And it's, it's all right, it does the job, you know, it, it does look like a pavement but we're missing the curb detail and uh, I'm not overly happy with it, it was alright, but uh, I'd like it to be a bit better than that. Uh, I experimented with the curb stones uh, from Scale Model Scenery over on the uh, other side of the canal uh, that we did previously. I was quite happy with the results with that, using a combination of the curb stones and some filler. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that in this area. Okay, so there's some curb stones installed along the side of the pavement just there. I think that's uh, quite a big improvement already. I've used rocket card glue to glue it down, and uh, for once I've actually used rocket card glue for its intended purpose, and that is gluing card. Uh, it's amazing how well that glue actually grabs um, hold of paper and cardboard, so you have to work quickly. Um, it's easy to make a mistake. Right, well that completes most of the filler work on the pavements. Um, it is a bit of a faff, it's not particularly easy to do. Uh, it can be quite messy, a bit of sanding required here and there, but uh, that's how I like to do it. I've always preferred using um, a sort of filler type material for replicating things like tarmac and concrete. Uh, for me it just looks a little bit more convincing than say a piece of card. You can see it just makes the houses look a little bit more bedded in. I've cut a, uh, an outline around the edge of the buildings and the step so that they slot into the pavement and it just gives the effect that the building actually has a proper foundation rather than being just placed on top of a flat surface. Another little detail that I enjoy is by using filler, it's never perfect, you're going to get areas where the filler sinks as it dries and you're also going to get cracks and potholes and natural random bits of stuff form in the pavement as you make it. Now you can fill it and smooth it over if you prefer but I actually quite like this effect, it just makes that area look a little bit more convincing, a bit more realistic, uh, goes well with a, a 1980s uh, industrial town. I've had an idea for a small scene that I wanted to put in this area for quite a while. Uh, I will try that off camera over the next uh, 
next few days and fingers crossed I can actually uh, pull it off and put it into the video. Um, for me, as a mechanic, um, I, I'm looking forward to uh, trying this out. Um, I'm not sure if it's possible with the Oxford diecast cars, but I'm going to give it a go. Again, as I said, I'm a mechanic by trade, so uh, a little scene that's car related I think will look really nice for this area. Of course, these are just the methods I've decided to use. I'm by no means an expert or an instructor on the subject. You're welcome to build the roads however you choose. Obviously, I have limitations and uh, things to consider here because my road uses the Magna Rail and it actually runs. So I've had to use paper for the road surface and things like that. But uh, when it comes to uh, fixed static scenery, I do like to use my uh, fillers and things like that for pavements and roads. Um, you're welcome to use any materials of your choice. There's loads of different methods out there for doing this sort of thing. It's ultimately what works best for you. Okay, so while the paint's drying, I just thought it'd be a good opportunity to mention that I uh, took a trip over to New Junction recently, uh, ran my Class 47 and some Mark 1 coaches on his layout, and it ran very nicely indeed. Um, had a really good day, a really good time, so thanks Richard for inviting me over, it was really enjoyable. Uh, we went over to uh, discuss the, uh, the plan for our uh, entry into the diorama competition, which is coming up at the, uh, the Wally um, headquarters for the club. Um, that's in Birmingham, and I've mentioned it before, it's on, the, it's on the Sunday, so we've got a little competition going on there between some of the YouTubers, so uh, the two Richards from the two junctions uh, teamed up, and uh, I went over there to uh, discuss what it was that we were going to do, so fingers crossed we can pull it off. Uh, and then uh, he also visited Everard Junction, and he's filmed a very nice video um, to go along with that, so there'll be a link in the description. Um, over to New Junction's channel where you can see a bit of behind the scenes action at Everard Junction and of course he brought some of his stock over too so we had some uh, more modern equipment running on the layout which was nice to see.
Okay, well there we go. We now have some uh, basic gardens. Done some different types of fences this time, try and spice things up a little bit. And uh, as you can see, uh, it's now in desperate need of some greenery. So let's move on to doing the gardens and uh, painting a few little bits and pieces. Well, that's much better. We've got some uh, nice grass going on there, a few plants, bushes. I tried to make the um, the retaining wall a bit more overgrown. You'd get quite a few bushes and things growing up there. And certainly if I lived in one of those houses, I would want to cover up that nasty retaining wall with as many plants as possible. So that's come out quite nicely. Very happy with that. So over the last evening or so, I've been working on this. This is a 1972-1973 uh, Mark I Ford Capri. Uh, it was originally a 3 litre, but somebody's put a 2 litre Pinto in it, and the cam belt has snapped, so it's currently being worked on in this little alleyway. So I'm sure I'll be doing this again in future, and uh, when I do, I will film it and show you how. Um, I've got an inkling now to, to see if I can do a broken down bus. That'll be quite good, although I will have to make a model of a bigger engine. Uh, the engine was reasonably fiddly to do. You can see I've done the battery, the engine, and the uh, radiator and the strut tops. Um, you could go further, but we're, we're talking about something smaller than a five pence piece, so it's not really worth the bother. I shall add some more details to this scene. I think we need a few friends to help the poor guy out trying to change the cam belt, and we need um, fluid spills and bottles and tools and all the usual stuff that gets strewn about when you start working on an old car. I was spurred on by the success of that little project, so uh, I moved on to the waste ground and decided to do something a little bit different um, instead of just putting some grass on it. Um, and uh, you may have seen that I poured some concrete in this area earlier, and that was to create some uh, sort of squidgy mats uh, for use for a playground.
This is just made out of a few odds and ends, including a number of pieces uh, left over from various scale model scenery kits. And as you can see, it's uh, really gone down a treat with the local businessmen. They tell me this is some sort of team building exercise, but I suspect they've uh, been to the pub after work. Uh, you can see we've got a slide. Um, there's sort of like a little fort, I suppose, up the top, uh, rope bridge, stairs to get to it, and then uh, look, a, a rope laddery type thing. I remember those from when I was a kid uh, back in the 90s, so I thought I'd add something similar to that. Um, the pad that it sat on um, is supposed to represent the sort of squidgy um, tar like tiles so you don't hurt yourself when you fall off. I've also added a swing just to. Uh, create a little bit of variety in the playground. Um, I've only just painted this so it does look quite shiny. Um, I hit the uh, climbing frame with a shot of matte varnish after I painted it and it certainly looks a lot better for it. I'll do the same for the swings. Okay, there we go, quite happy with that. Obviously, I need to vacuum off the excess once it's dried. I haven't applied uh, a massive amount, so there should be some uh, bare patches showing through once, uh, once I've cleaned off the excess. So, uh, quite pleased with how that little area has come out. It needs a fence, most definitely, so uh, we'll come back to this in the next video. So there you have it. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, picked up perhaps a couple of hints and tips. Uh, as I said uh, previously in the video, uh, if you want to check out New Junction's video of uh, behind the scenes at Everard Junction, there is a link below in the video description. And uh, if you want to uh, see what we're up to on a Sunday, then uh, feel free to come along to the Wally Model Railway Club's Open Day, where I will be taking part with a number of other YouTubers in a uh, small uh, diorama competition. And that's this Sunday, the 7th of July. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed it, and as always, I will be back with more progress, hopefully in the next few weeks.